I'm Tony Williams, and you're once again welcome to Knowing What I Now Know. Like always, I like to start today's post by first of all thanking and acknowledging every single person who's taken it upon themselves to engage with me over the last few posts that I've put out there. Uh, for those who done it through the inbox, through uh, calling, through my social media platforms. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to you guys. I want to say that the feedback I get from you guys are extremely encouraging. Um, so I would please ask you to continue to listen to the post, uh, share them, comment on them. Uh, it does two of two things for me. One is that it gives me uh, satisfaction, first of all, to know that these posts are being listened to. They're changing lives in a way, impacting lives and desirable to the air for some people. And secondly, it gives me an opportunity to know what people want to hear, where I could make changes to the post and what sort of messages I want to put out there. So that being said, I will ask you to continue to listen to them as soon as best as you could or whenever you have the spare moment to listen to them sometimes they do come up a little bit longer than i expect them to but it's just there's so much information to put out there it can't be put all into a 20 or 30 minute post Do you know the way i designed this blog is for it to be a self-development and transformational video blog uh, so every message I put out there is actually very intentional and relevant to the way I think or to the next step that I think is necessary for the process of change and transformation to take place. So if there are any videos that you might have missed in the past which I've put out there, um, it would be a good idea sometimes to listen to them when you do have a spare moment so that you could catch up on you know the new topic that I put out and you can see how the relevant relevance is on the process of reconstruction that I found myself on and that there's the same journey that I want to bring some people on so you can always check these uh, backlog of posts on my website uh, www.tonywilliams with an extra s at the end of it dot com on any of my social media channel platforms I have the Facebook the YouTube page, YouTube channel, Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram and um, the links to those would always be at the bottom of this video if you take a look at it or in the descriptions of this video. So having said that, let's dive right into it. So today I want to talk about the significance of having positive personal relationships and surrounding ourselves with only quality people when we do eventually decide that we want to begin to walk this journey of reconstruction or transformation of our lives you know so technically what i'm going to try and do is break the post into two parts the first part which will deal with the significance of a personal a positive personal relationship uh, and a sort of differentiate between positive and negative relationships and how they affect us in our journey and our works of life and once we have made that decision or once we have identified, identified what's positive or what's negative and the relationship we want to keep how it's so important going forward to surround ourselves with only quality people who could help us get to the next level and who we could benchmark each step you know against their character and their standard also a quick background onto what I believe our relationship is. I, I believe um, as individuals the minute we are conceived into this world uh, we begin to form relationships or relationships begins to get formed with us via our mother, our father, brothers, sisters, uncles, niece, nephews, whatever you may have it, friends, family you know they welcome us into their circle you know because our mind is just bare you know begin to instill all sorts of things into us you know beliefs you know family standards values morals education you know what is right from what is wrong you know family tradition whatever you may have it you know they begin to instill it in us you know um, hoping that that will sustain us as a child growing up and it's most often said that the gen warm and gentle relationship that a child has or a parent has with their child is fundamental to how that child sees the world when it becomes to turn into or when that child turns into an adult it comes a stage when we sort of are 
from that childhood stage we're ready to meet or join a different form of relationship which is the relationship of the world is structure which is um, by going to school you know primary school nursery primary school secondary school uni whatever you may have it but what happens is that everything that we were taught from our our sort of family circle when we come into this worldly structure it begins to get tested why does it get tested it gets tested because the people who are instilled into the system or who are in this system or who make up this structure come from places that could be totally diverse from us so they don't come from the same family background they're probably not given the same moral standards or they, so what they bring into our lives when we do begin to meet them or you know when we meet them in school or when we become friends with them or when we become to begin to relate with them is something that begins to test you know and go against everything that we were taught when we were young you know be it that you know if they are friends we might find certain things in them that are desirable to us you know certain things that you know we, we could look at and begin to admire which begins to lean us towards them and if you know if we're leaning us ourselves towards them in a way we're beginning you know we're showing a bit of our vulnerability towards them and in showing a bit of their our vulnerability towards them like could be through the shoes they wear the clothes they wear you know the way Way they talk you know their knowledge you know just their boldness their courageousness you know certain elements that we lack and we find we see in them and we find desirable and begin to develop you know a likeness towards it or starting to think ourselves you know oh, well, i like to be like this or i like to be able to do this we begin to form a relationship with them we're out at one minute taking a look at whether that relationship the outcome of that relationship could be positive towards us or could be negative towards us because what we are looking for is that instant satisfaction of the thirst that we have for our desire to be like this person and without doing all the necessary background checks or what the business world will call the KYC know your customer you know we begin to fall victim to any of these things that this person says you know we just literally begin to follow that's why it's so important that as for parents it, it's constantly important that the way we relate to our, our, our children you know it doesn't leave them exposed it leaves them as confident you know it, we, we, begin, we all constantly encourage them not to be followers but to be leaders in their own right because if we you know continue to use like the carrot and stick approach which is a way in which I was brought up you know the child eventually gets to a state where he begins to get rebellious you know and, and that's kind of life that I had to live you know my, my mom was she was cool but my, my father was sort of a, a carrot and stick person no disrespect to him I love him to pieces but um if I look at where my rebellion came from it's probably that but the thing is because I you know the rebellion from the carrot and stick approach of my father and then started starting to see things that are desirable in the friends that I saw decided to be hanging out in school with so, you know if they were smoking a cigarette I could have think it was cool if they said they had 20 girls I thought that was cool you know because because everything my father instilled in me because it was still the carrot and stick approach or because it was you know beating when you were wrong you know everything that he said that was good I tended or that's that the word I tend not to I would tend not to sort of pay attention to it no more and you know that's that it's normal for that rebellion to sort of just kick in and and then I would lean towards my friends you know and, uh, and that's where it all began and that's how it actually is for for most people you know most of us we you know that circle of friends then begin to influence us and you know we feel the needs to be part of that relationship with our friends you know we you know if 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 there's a trend that's going on and they're rocking it we want to be it regardless of how we're going to get the money for it you know if there's a party that's you know that's talk of the town 
we want to be there, we want to represent regardless of everything else that has to be sacrificed just to show up at that party, you know. And that's the kind of relationship that is poisonous. But on the other hand, they're relationships that are good, they're relationships that, you know, could lead us in the right way. You know, you could form a relationship with, you know, a group of of friends that, you know, they're, they're positive-minded people. You know, they you know, they they go in places. They've got goals. They've got desires. You know, they know. You know, their mind is set in a way, and you know the influences of this world they can identify them quickly, and they can know how to put them apart. You know, they they they. They're not those kind of people who are easily influenced or fickle-minded. And you find out that friends are friends who sort of fell into that clique. Though they had us, like sort of outcast as friends, they our, our peer pressure on them wasn't strong enough to derail them off track because they had a set of, they had relationship with different people you you realize for those kind of people the likes of me or you who are listening to this who agrees with weren't always their best friends though we were their friends they actually had a set of proper friends who they who were trusted and who they were you know going in the same direction and then who they would relate to more who they could share their dreams who they set their goals with and then, you know and they probably would use the likes of us or maybe just a moment of fun or, or a party or you know whatever that would just you know give them temporary pleasure but never 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 distract them off their main purpose and their main focus in life and that's the difference between negative and, and positive relationship and how it stems from our family background so when you when you are able to identify that the people you relate to they could be leading you in the right direction or the wrong direction it's important to first of all I have figure out where the root cause of what brought you into that sort of relationship with and if you do identify what the root cause of what brought you into that relationship is then you can start to figure out okay how about if I did something differently how about if I change my set of friends. How about if I decide to withdraw myself from these people for a period of time and then go off in a new direction? Be it I might be alone in this new direction, going, I'm able to find friends or people or groups or associations who are knowledgeable in this area. And because I found myself and because I'm not happy with the place I am, I'm going to personally decide and try to attract these people into my life. But it has to take you, first of all, identifying the root cause, knowing what relationship you're in now, seeing the circle of friends that you're in, knowing the ones that are good to relate to, that will be able to take you to the next level, or knowing the ones that are totally not good. Because some friends are just around us and they're just totally toxic. Some friends the longer you hold on to them, you know, the minute you meet them, it seems like nothing. But the longer you hold on to them, they become so toxic. And the longer you hold on to them, you just become like them. And that's where that phrase comes from, show me your friend and I know who you are. It's so different. It's so impossible to differentiate or to, to separate yourself from a group of friends that, um, I just go in nowhere, uh, you know, you, you would just be exactly like them. And if you're with a group of friends who are going somewhere, you know, isn't it ironic, and I would use the word ironic, how lawyers and lawyers will be friends, doctors and doctors will be friends, politicians and politicians will be friends, you know, psychologists and psychologists will be friends. You know, at the same, in the same vein, um, people in the lower ranks, you know, Drug dealers will be friends with friends, prostitutes will be friends with prostitutes, 
you know, a fraudsters will be friends with fraudsters. It's, it's, it's just, it, that's just the way it is, you know, and it's difficult. Church members will be friends with church members. So, uh, you know, you, you try to find, you, you tend to find security in the group of friends that you're in and the relationship that you keep with them. That's why once you realize that this relationship is toxic, and most importantly, you found yourself and decided that you want to change, you have to change those set of friends. It'll be hard. It'd be a sacrifice, but there's a step you have to take to get you onto the next direction. And then the part two of it would be having only quality people around you. So the minute we identify positive relationships and negative relationships and know the root cause and the fact that look where we are now, we know it's you know not in line with our DNA and we've made a choice that we are going to walk a road of transformation and change then next step is to find only quality people to surround ourselves with who we can benchmark ourselves against as we walk that journey of change because I kid you not every time you try to go you know towards direction you know, if you don't find people who can encourage you, who are your mentors, who are your coaches, who, you know, you now desire to become like your old set of friends, they would always still be there and they would always pull you back. I mean, in no form of disrespect, when I got to that stage where I made that decision for my life, there were social circles that I had to consciously withdraw myself from. Um, it's in you know that uh, I'm, I, I just got to that stage where I thought to myself if I have to move in the right direction I have to slowly pull myself from the left direction and um, what other things I've done you know sometimes I just get invited to the, the social circles I'll say yep I'm coming and I just switch off my phone sometimes I wouldn't even pick up people's call you know you have you have to get to that stage where you make that conscious decision yourself and then every time you make that conscious decision yourself you lean towards the right direction because if I sort of get a call at night oh let's go party and I knew clearly that in that club overnight two bags would come out of my pocket you know and I said to myself tonight I'm not spending that two bags you know I would rather go and spend that two bag you know designing a website for my business or printing business cards or you know doing whatever you know or doing some uh, media advertising for my social media advertising for my business I'll switch off my phone I would wake up in the morning and I'll have that two bags on my table as opposed to normally that two bag will be in the pocket of the bartender, you know, just for drinking drinks that I know I wouldn't even finish, you know, myself, alone by myself. You know, so that, 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 that's, that's, that's the sort of differentiation we need to make for ourselves. And it's the honest differentiation, you know, because the minute you decide that you want to start walking on this journey, towards the right channel there are going to be so many things that are always going to want to draw you back into where you came from you know because it's never hard it's never easy i want to say leaving everything that you thought was your life before and to begin a new journey of life and that's why the people you surround yourself with in this new journey of life they now become your benchmark they now become those that those kind of people that you you now desire to be like you know the, the professionals the entrepreneurs you know people that run their own business people that has bought you know 10 15 houses people that you know all sorts of people that you know uh, great investment banking wh whatever it, it might be IT contractors whatever you know those people that you've now looked at and said look this is the line I want to follow you know I could surely do it this way you need to start surrounding yourself with them although you might not be able to get into that circle straight away but slowly and steadily you will begin to sort of gain steps and significance and know the right thing to do let me tell you the circle of the relationship of people that were negative 
that brought us up to you know where we were at that stage we never got into that you know overnight because I can remember the very first time anyone tried to smoke a cigarette because you thought, you know, everyone pretended that, you know, you've been smoking before. Because if you had friends there that were smoking, regular smokers, the very first time you lit up a cigarette, you try as much as possible to pretend that, you know, you used to smoke before. But the minute you take that first puff, whether weed or cigarette, the look on your face will tell everyone else that you are, you're a JJC. But over a period of time, continuous practice, continuous practice, continuous practice, you know, you begin to hold the cigarette like this and like this, and you begin to do rolls with the smoke and all sorts of, you know, craziness. But that's just how it is. But that was a conscious desire that you made with yourself that come way, come what may, you're going to learn to smoke this cigarette in a cool manner, you know, so, you know, and that's, and that's how it is. Whether it's cigarette weed is all the same same thing you know, and that's how it is with her surrounding yourself with quality people the difference is those were negative people and now that you're making that transformation you need to surround yourself with quality people these quality people as I said you could benchmark every step of your success against them you could admire them you could go for counseling you could go for mentoring you could see what they do in the right direction you could ask questions and you would get answers answers that would change your life answers that are sustainable not answers that you know are just temporary these are lifetime answers that you could pass down onto generations and gener lifetime skills or you know things that of significance that you could do with a heart of peace and satisfaction you will find by having quality people around you so that's all i wanted to talk to you to today um i think it's quite important as i said relationships it's not something i could um as i said earlier on put into uh, a 20 or 30 minute post um, but they're very important to every single step that we make in life you know every business or every entrepreneur you know when they want to start any form of business that they do the first people they do the first thing they do is surround themselves with a team even Jesus Christ you know when he wanted to start his ministry the first thing he did pick a team pick a team of disciples you know when you have quality people around you when you have a quality team around you you're on the way to achieving that goal or that thing that you desire to be I hope this blesses someone but like always I want to end with a short story you know a psychologist at one stage was in a class at one time teaching his students about stress management. Um, he picked up a glass and lifted it up, a glass of water, I should say, and lifted it up. And as all the students gazed at the glass, they looked at him and thought, oh, he's going to ask this normal question. Um, how full is the glass or how empty is the glass? Well, he held it up for a little while longer. And as they looked at the glass, he asked the student, or well, the class the student, how heavy do you think this glass is? You know, a lot of students shouted out different answers. Two ounces, one ounce, one ounce, ten ounce, I don't know. Um, he held it up just like this for a little while longer and said to them, the weight of this glass really doesn't matter. You can never tell how heavy this glass is just by me holding it up. It's the length of time that I hold this glass up that will determine the weight. Because if I hold this glass for one minute, then it means nothing. If I begin to hold it for two minutes, the weight means absolutely nothing. If I hold this glass up just like this for about an hour, the same weight that was in this glass will begin to cause my arm to shake, tremble, become weak, probably numb and paralyzed and then the weight of this glass will take effect and I will drop it. Moral of this is that this is how relationships are. Some relationships that are very toxic, you go into them initially just thinking they're nothing. The longer time you spend with them, 
they become to get toxic. The longer you spend with them, they get, you know, they begin to get your mind captivated, poisoned, numb, disorientated. They become to make you every single thing that you weren't designed to be in life. The quicker you drop it when you identify it, the better it will be with you, or the better it will be for you. I hope that blesses someone. <laughs> Till I speak to you again next time, have a fantastic week, good night, and God bless. I'll drink this glass of water now.